Hey, brothers and sisters, it's Chad Buck, Mr. Judah Dan, all of you met 360. And you know what just happened to me? I got the knock. You ever gotten the knock? You go and you open it and there's the Jehovah Witnesses or the Mormons at your door? Well, I just came, had a really good conversation with a couple um, pretty nice gentlemen, um, some Jehovah Witnesses. And I and I feel bad for them. I feel bad. I, I think they regret ever even coming to town that I was in. Um, I sawed them up and stacked them like cordwood. <laughs> I mean, it was their doctrine, their stuff that they were trying to preach. I just instantly, with the Bible, just completely sawed them up and stacked them like cordwood. And I felt guilty because I felt like I was working on the Sabbath. I mean... I'm sitting there talking with these gentlemen. They're trying to tell me their dogma. And we're, we're getting along, you know, because I know they're out. They're trying to preach the gospel. You know, I don't trust the Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't trust the Watchtower Ministry thing because um, I've done too much research into it and understand its hidden combinations. <laughs> so, um, but they come. They come here and they, um, they're a, a handshakey bunch. And I, I hate when I shake the hand of some um, dude and he gives me his Freemasonic grit. Gosh, man, it rises something in me that makes me want to just snap his wrist. I mean, when somebody shakes my hand and I feel them put their, do their little, their little Freemasonic twist, I, I just feel like snapping it right in half. And, um, but I didn't this time. I was very cool. Um, I think I was able to show them a few things. They were amazed. They realized that they were dealing with somebody that um, was very more educated than them. Um, but their willingness to go door to door and try to get people on board, I, I'm in, that's something I don't do. You know? So I'm not going to judge them or condemn them. I, I prayed a blessing for them and we had a good conversation and a good tip for tap back and forth. And um, we didn't get angry. We didn't hate on each other. I did. I was very polite and um, they were polite to me. We was able to disagree, but yet I was able to show them what I was saying. And they didn't expect to come to my door and me to know so many scriptures that just sawed up everything that they were trying to say to me, man. Well, how come I get so much joy out of that, man? I just love taking false doctrine and shredding it to ribbons. And then re and if there's any truth in it, pulling the truth blocks out here and taking the lie blocks and burning them, and then we restack the truth where it belongs, man. But I love doing that. You know, poor, poor Mormons and Je Jehovah Witnesses when they come to my house. And Lord bless them and protect them. Help them to understand, you know, because one thing I do, like I said, I admire about them is their willingness to um, go door to door. I mean, gosh, what would happen if I went door to door? What would happen if we got together and went door to door and tried to enlighten people and tell them about the Lord? The, these gentlemen are out there doing work, trying to win converts to their... Jehovah Witnessism, but in the process, they're planting little seeds of Jesus everywhere they go. Even if they're not utterly correct, you know, hey, we all learned about Jesus in a, in, we thought he lived at the North Pole with Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, didn't we? We, we? we were all taught about Jesus in some kind of erred form, wasn't we? But we still loved him, didn't we? There's something about Jesus that even when they try to cover him up with a lie and try to reformulate him into something else, there's something about Jesus that gets through. It's something about Jesus that cuts through all the lies and the falsehood. And when you love him, just on the basis of who he is, 
He's the Son of God and He came and He died on the cross for you and for me and for the sins of the world. And because He loved His Father, He obeyed Him unto death. That, that is who my King is. That is who my King is. And, and however I learned about Him, I bless. Even the false, even in the erred way, may those people still not lose their cup of cold water. May the Lord rescue those people who were in error, who spread the gospel even in error. The gospel got to me. You know, if it wasn't for Iron Maiden, I wouldn't even know what the number 666 was. If it wasn't for me listening to Slayer, I wouldn't have... I mean, even in that satanic music and their hatred towards Jesus and all that vile stuff they're singing... They're still, it still plants a seed. They plant in a seed. And it's Jesus. But people, they, they learn to hate him through metal music and say, and, um, you know. But that seed still gets planted. And that's what happened to me. I mean, gosh, I never ever wanted to be a Christian. I never wanted to go to no church and be holy. I wanted to play rock and roll. Get laid. Smoke dope. You know? Praise God for rescuing me from all that. But I'm just... I guess my little rant here is... I marveled at the way that... The truth can even be wrapped up in a lie. And still... Get to you. You know? I, I'm really hostile towards Christmas and Easter and all the churches that still practice it. But then think about it. I mean, would I have even heard about God if it wasn't for Christmas? Would I have even heard about Jesus if it wasn't for Christmas? So I'm not going to practice Christmas or anything. I still don't keep those things. But I'm, um, I'm not as mad about it as I used to be. I used to be really mad about it. I'm... I'm not mad at anybody today over it. I, I won't partake in it. And I still think it's wrong and I think people should come out of it. But um, I have no real condemnation for the people that are in it because, you know, God set it up. He set up preachers over the land. He set them up. Yeah. People that really love God end up reading their Bibles. And like Jesus said, if you if you love me, you'll obey me. Right? So if we love the Father, we're going to obey Him. So, I don't know. That's just what happened to me. And I just thought I'd share it with you. A little micro rant on how the um, Jehovah Witnesses came over. And... um they want to come back. At least they say they do. They might come back, man, but you come here to be teaching me. You come here if you want to learn something. <laughs> Don't be coming here trying to teach me that watchtower stuff, man. That ain't going to work. But if you guys want to come here for healing from some of that dogma, it's fine. Cool. Um, all of you met, 360. Mr. Judah Dan, Chad Buck, peace.